My name is Doug Kemmer. I'm an instructor with the South Side Virginia Community College. The next period of instruction is going to be on pre-trip inspection. This is going to be for a truck and a trailer. Now, there's two reasons why we do a pre-trip inspection. First and foremost is for safety reasons, and secondly, because it's required by law. So while I'm doing this piece of instruction, I'm going to be pointing out the different items on the truck that you should inspect. But I'm also going to talk about how I inspect them and what I'm looking for. So please pay particular attention to me as I am doing this and try to learn the same wording that I'm going to demonstrate. So let's begin. We're going to go to the front of the truck. Alright, so this is the approach to the vehicle. And as I'm approaching the vehicle, I'm looking at its posture. If it's leaning one way or the other, it's a strong indication that I either have a broken suspension item or a flat tire. Looking at it from here, our truck looks like as if it's sitting pretty well uh, erect with the pavement like it should, and it doesn't have any problems. Looking up underneath the front bumper and underneath the engine compartment, I'm looking for any puddling fluids, which would indicate that I have leaks. Also, I'm going to look up further at my visor above the windshield there, and I'm just checking that to make sure it appears to be squarely mounted. It's not hanging loose. All my marker lights and ID lights up there have no cracked, broken, or missing lenses. Also, I can see my windshield doesn't have any unauthorized stickers or anything obscuring the vision, and it looks to be clean. I can also see that I have a valid state inspection sticker up there. As I get closer, I'm checking the grill on the front of the truck just to make sure there's nothing obstructing airflow going through the front of the grill and make sure that it's properly attached to the truck and it is not broken or damaged. Also, I can see the headlamps. I don't have any cracked, broken, or missing light lenses. Same for my turn signal indicators on the two outside edges that are amber, making sure that, again, they are the right color and that there's no broken or missing lens. My license plate is a valid license plate. My student driver sign there is squarely mounted on there and properly attached, it's not loose. Come along the side then, I'm gonna start looking at uh, some of the attachments here to the hood, making sure that my mirror bracket is firmly attached to the truck and it's not loose, making sure that my mirror lens is not cracked, broken, or missing. Also, same thing here, I want to look at this mirror on the side of the door, making sure that it's firmly attached, it's not loose or dangling. And again, checking on the mirrors, making sure that I don't have any cracked or broken mirrors. While I'm here then, I would open up my door. I want to make sure that it opens, it closes as it should, and it does. Also then, I want to check up inside the truck, and I'm looking up inside here at the floor just to make certain that I don't have any debris in here that could get up underneath the pedals and be a hazard. All that looks to be fine at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and close the door again. I'll check my windows once I'm up inside the cab of the truck to make sure that they go up and down properly. Here I've got my fuel tank cap and I want to take that off and inspect it making sure that I don't have any missing gaskets. I have a good rubber gasket on this one, so it's a good sealing surface. And I'll put that back on. I'm also going to check these steps here, make sure that they're free and clear of any kind of trip hazards. And I also want to make sure that it holds my weight, it's not loose. That also inspects these straps, making sure that they're properly attached and are tight. I don't see any signs of slippage where the tank has moved inside of the uh, straps at all, and the tank straps look to be good and firm. There's no signs of anything being moved, and I do not see any puddling fluids or any dripping fluids underneath my fuel tank. All right, at this point, I'll go ahead and open up my hood. Make sure that I get both latches undone, and then I come around to the front. I'm place my foot up here where I can get a hood, hold of the hood and lift and raise the hood. Alright, so I'm going to come back around here on the driver's side. First thing I'm going to do again is inspecting where the windshield is at and I want to check these wiper arms and the blades. 
I want to make sure that there's good spring tension and that the wiper blades themselves are not damaged, they're soft and pliable and should make good wiper blades. This here coolant tank is my reservoir for the engine coolant and I just need to make sure that it's up to the minimum level and we're right there at the minimum level. Uh, wouldn't hurt to actually add a little bit of coolant on this one. Also then I'm going to come to the top of the engine compartment here, the top of my engine. This here is my valve cover and I just want to make sure that I don't have any cracks in it, nothing that shows any signs of anything leaking or any problems there. Also I'm checking the hardware just to make sure again that it is firmly attached to the top of the engine and I don't see any oil leaking out of the engine valve cover or coming down the side. Looking at the end or the engine uh, block, no signs of being cracked or damaged. Again, no leaks, nothing that's coming unbolted. All the bolts and hardware are there and in place for my intake manifold. So just in general, there's no signs of damage or anything coming undone off the side of the engine. This is my air compressor. This is what builds up my air pressure for the truck. I just want to check it to make sure that it's properly attached and it's secure. And it is. And it is gear driven through this accessory drive up here on the front of my engine. And I want to make sure there's no oil leaks. The casing's not cracked or broken. And my hoses are not rubbing and chafing. This hose here is soft and pliable. So that all looks to be good. This one does not have the governor attached to it. The governor is remote located somewhere back up underneath the cab closer to the air tanks. Now coming towards the front, again, I want to come up here. This is my radiator. And I just want to make sure that all the brackets and braces holding it are firmly attached. Nothing's loose. Looking in through the back side here, I can see that my Radiator doesn't have any obstructions, doesn't appear to have any leaks. I can also check out my engine fan here and see that I don't have any cracked, broken, or missing fan blades on the front of my engine. Also in front of that, this here, this is my after cooler. That is where the air comes from the turbocharger after it's pressurized, comes through this hose and is blown into the engine. Again, I don't have any loose clamps no splits or cracks in the hoses, nothing that's coming undone. All that is firmly attached and in good shape. Right behind my engine fan, right here, this is my fan belt. And I want to check it to make sure it does not have any more than half to three quarters of an inch of free play in it. That one has a tensioner on it, so it doesn't have any free play at all. And the fan belt itself is not cracked, frayed, or split. As I come on over here then, uh, one of the other things I need to do is to check my engine oil level. And it looks like it's down in the hash marks, which means it doesn't need to have oil added just yet. Um, but it could use some here in the future before too long. I would check my engine oil there. And this tube here, if I take this plug out, is where I would add my engine oil. So I've kind of finished with the engine overall. Uh, now I'm going to work out this way towards me and I'm going to tackle a few different systems. But starting with my frame, this here long frame rail, channel frame rail, is the main frame of the truck. And I just want to check, make sure there's no signs of any damage. There's no cracks, nothing's twisted, dented, or bent. All looks to be good there. Attached to that is my suspension system. So I'm going to start with that. This here is my spring mount and I'm checking the bolts and the hardware there to make sure that they are all there and in place, attaching it to the frame of the truck. My spring hanger is properly bolted to that as well. And the leaf spring is properly positioned with the bolt and hardware in the front there. My leaf springs do not have any cracked, broken, shifted or missing leaves. And the leaf spring here goes all the way back to the hanger at the back. Again, all my hardware is there and in place. I can see the springs in its proper position and the mount to the frame of the tray, the uh, frame of the truck has all of its hux bolts and all are there 
and properly attached. Now, also with my leaf spring suspension there are my U-bolts. Uh, my U-bolts here and here do not show any signs of shiny metal. Shiny metal would indicate a loose or broken U-bolt. This is my shock absorber here, and I'm just checking it to make sure it's not damaged, it's not leaking. The bolt and hardware are there in place, as well as the bolt and hardware uh, and nut there for the upper connection. Also, my bushings are there and look to be in good shape. So that's suspension. Next thing I'm coming to is my steering system. So first thing I want to check here is my steering shaft or steering gear shaft. And I just want to make sure it's firmly attached in its proper position. And I'm also trying to check this universal joint to make sure that I don't have any excessive play and that nothing is coming undone or loose. And we're good there. Also has its hardware in place attaching to the shaft on the gear box. This is my steering gear box and it's got about four bolts that hold it over to the frame. Um, want to make sure that it's not leaking, it's not damaged, no cracks, all my bolts and hardware are there. This is my pitman arm and that pitman arm is properly attached to the shaft with a pinch bolt and it's nut is there and in place it appears to be tight I do not see any shiny metal or movement between that pitman arm and that shaft that would indicate that I have any looseness and this cannot be welded alright down at the bottom I have my uh, drag link here this drag link has a small manufactured bend in it otherwise though it's not damaged and does not have any unmanufactured bends it is attached to the pitman arm with a large castle nut and a cotter pin down at the other end of it again i want to make sure that it is attached to the upper control arm or steering arm and that it also has a large castle nut and cotter pin attaching it to that arm now the steering continues on down behind so now i'm inspecting the tie rod and making sure that my tie rod, which is this bar right here, is properly attached to the lower control arm with a large castle nut and cotter pin right here and attaching it securely to the steering knuckle. And then from there, I'm gonna move on to my air brakes. So the first thing I do is I wanna check my air hose, make sure that it's soft and pliable it's not rubbing or chafing up against anything. I also want to check my brake chamber. This is a service brake chamber, single brake chamber. And it's securely attached to the framework with its hardware and bolts and it's uh, in its proper position. Also, I want to check and make sure that I have um, a manufactured hole here. It's not an unmanufactured hole, which I need to be worried about. So that one's fine. Also, I can see my push rod and my yoke are attached to the slack adjuster, which is this apparatus, uh, with a retaining pin and cotter pin in place. And the slack adjuster looks to be in its proper position and greased. Coming on out to my foundation brakes, I can see my brake drum. Just checking to make sure it doesn't have any excessive wear, no cracks, and no broken or missing pieces out of it. I can see my brake shoes. Brake shoes have at least one quarter inch of brake padding and there's no chunks or broken or missing pieces and it's not separating away from the lining. There's no pulling oil in the well of the wheel down in here which would indicate that I have a leaking wheel seal. Also I'm going to look at my wheel checking out the rim here making sure that I do not have any excessive damage no cracks no broken or uh, unmanufactured welds to that rim the tire sidewall I can inspect that make sure I do not have any cuts no cracks and no bulges tire tread depth I want to make sure I have at least four thirty seconds of an inch for my steer tire and again coming to the outside sidewall checking it to make sure I don't have any cuts no cracks and no bulges looking at my rim I can see the rim has no excessive damage, no cracks, no unmanufactured welds. 
looking at my lug nuts. My lug nuts are all there and accounted for. And I do not see any rust trails between my lug nuts would indicate a loose lug nut. Proper way to check my lug nuts is with a lug nut wrench. Also while I'm here I'm looking for puddling fluids in the well the wheel again. And if I did have that it would indicate that I have a leaking hub gasket. Here's my valve stem. I just want to check and make sure that it's properly and securely mounted right position. This one has a cap on it like it should have. Proper way to check my air pressure is with an air pressure gauge or a rubber mallet. From this side then I'm going to go around to the passenger side and I'm going to begin an inspection over there. And as I come around I want to make sure that I would inspect this mirror just like I did the other side and the, the frame. As I come around to this side I'm looking in here for the things that are different on this side. Main things that are different is going to be one, the alternator. And I want to check, make sure that it's properly bolted in place, securely attached like it should be. I want to make sure that my electrical connections do not have any excessive corrosion and they're tight. And also, I want to check my fan belt because the alternator is belt driven. Make sure I don't have any cuts, cracks, or frays to my fan belt. And it has good tension. This one has an automatic tensioner, so there's no free play at all in it. The next item I'm going to inspect is my water pump. This here is my water pump. It is gear driven through the accessory drive of the front of the engine. I'm checking the water pump. Just make sure that it's good and secure. It's not loose. And I do not see any signs of any leaks. Also from back in here, I can see back into the back back here. Those are my oil filters. Sometimes it's easier to get a view from there or underneath. But I just want to check the oil filter, make sure that it is secure, it's not damaged, and it's not leaking. I would inspect all the other items on this side of the truck just like I did the other side. So now it's time to go back around to the driver's side. So now I'm going to start down the side of my truck. First thing here is I'm looking at the side of my sleeper and I want to make sure that there's no damage to it, no holes, nothing that's wrong with the side. Open up my side box and I'm going to inspect inside here to make sure that I have my three reflective triangles in this box right here. And also I have my fire extinguisher and it's in the proper charged green arc on the fire extinguisher and it's secure. And I would also say that I would check my fuse box and make sure I have one spare fuse for every amperage that my truck uses. This is my side marker light and turn signal indicator and I'm just checking it to make sure that I don't have a cracked or broken lens. All my hardware is there and in place. Let me come around the back side of the cab. Now on the back side of the cab here, I'm checking to make sure I don't have any holes or damage to the back side of the sleeper. All my grab handles are good and tight, firmly attached, no apparent damage. Also my exhaust, I'm checking to make sure that my exhaust stack is firmly attached to the muffler. The muffler and its brackets are in their proper place. All the bolts and hardware are there. Making sure that the mount down here at the bottom that supports it, everything's properly mounted in there. And as I'm checking the whole system over, I'm looking to see if I have any soot trails that would indicate a leaking exhaust. And all that looks to be good. So now I'm going to come to this here catwalk, and it's firmly attached in place. And I would explain that I would normally remove this, take off this cover here, and inspect my battery compartment. When I inspect the batteries, I check to make sure that they are firmly attached in place. They have mounting brackets and all in there to do that. I would also make sure they're not leaking and that there's no excessive corrosion on the batteries. Also here are my steps for climbing up onto the catwalk. And I just want to check, make sure they're free and clear of any debris, no trip hazards. And then just check to make sure it holds my weight. All right, so now once I've done the battery box, uh, I'm also checking again my frame rails, making sure they're good and straight. There's no signs of any damage, nothing twisted, dented, or bent. 
I'm also going to then begin to move towards the drive axle, but before I do, I want to make sure that my drive shaft is not damaged, it's not twisted, it's not bent or dented. Also that my U-joint here does not have any excessive play in it. So I just go ahead and try to turn the drive shaft a little bit there and make sure that it's not loose or anything, and it's not. My rear drive axle, I'm checking that just to make sure that it's not damaged, it's not cracked anywhere, I don't see any leaking fluids anywhere, and I don't want to see any puddling fluids down on the ground. From here then, I can also look back here and see this rod up here that is my torsion bar. And I want to make sure that that torsion bar is in its proper position. It's not twisted, it's not broken. All the bolts and hardware are there and in place. Having done that, then I'm going to move on to my brake system. Alright, looking at my brakes. So this is a double brake chamber. This one has two chambers, a rear one and a front one. This is the service brake chamber. This is my spring brake chamber. So while the truck is sitting still and there's no air applied to the system, the spring brake is applying my brakes right now. I want to make sure that my spring brake does not show any signs of being loose, that the hardware is there and in place, mounting it to the brackets. I can see my air hoses are soft and pliable. They're not rubbing or chafing anywhere. Also, as I'm looking at the brake chamber, I can see that there are no unmanufactured holes. This obviously here is a manufactured hole. Same thing down at the front chamber. Okay. And I'm just making certain um, that it's again in its proper position. Looking back towards the back part, I can see that I have my push rod and yoke which are attached to the slack adjuster here. The slack adjuster is not beyond 90 degrees with the brake chamber push rod and yoke, and that I have a retaining pin and cotter pin holding them there in place. And again, I would inspect this side over here. Same thing, checking my brake chamber, the hoses, my slack adjuster, making sure it's not beyond 90 degrees. Having done that, then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna inspect my suspension items and I have a shock absorber back here and I wanna make sure that that shock absorber is in its normal position. The hardware and the bolts are there and in place. It's not leaking and it's not damaged. Also then I have my U-bolts. I have one here and one here which are not showing any signs of shiny metal. Shiny metal would indicate a loose or broken U-bolt. My leaf spring is not damaged, it's not cracked, broken, shifted, or missing. It's in the bracket, or the mount, which is securely mounted to the frame of the truck with these hux bolts, no missing hardware. Leaf spring, is in its proper position. All the bolts and hardware for the front are there and in place. All right, so that's suspension. Now I need to look at my brakes, my foundation brakes out here. So I'm looking at my brake drum, making sure that it's not cracked, broken, or missing. Making sure that my inside of the brake drum does not show any signs of excessive wear. This one's nice and flat and smooth. My brake shoes are not worn down to less than quarter of an inch. I have to have at least one quarter inch of brake shoe. It's not cracked, it's not broken, and it's not separating away from the shoe lining. Same thing for my bottom. Making sure that that's not less than a quarter of an inch. And again, not broken or missing. No chunks out of it. Also in the bottom, I can look down here and see that I do not have any puddling oil. Puddling oil would indicate a leaking wheel seal. My rim, this part here, this is of course the wheel, and I'm checking that to make sure that I don't have any excessive damage, no cracks, no unmanufactured welds. My tire sidewall has no cuts, no cracks, no bulges. Tire tread depth at least 4 seconds of an inch. 
This is a splash guard. I just want to make sure it's securely mounted in place and not coming loose. Again, coming out here, looking at my tread depth, both tires have at least 4 30 seconds of an inch. I also want to look in, in between and make sure that my rims are properly butted together. There's no gaps between the rims. The rims do not show any signs of excessive damage, no cracks, no unmanufactured welds. My tire sidewalls have no cuts, no cracks, and no bulges. And there's no foreign objects trapped between my tires. Back out here again, I can see tire sidewall has no cuts, no cracks, no bulges. Rim has no excessive damage, no cracks, no unmanufactured welds. My lug nuts are all there and accounted for with no rush trails between them indicating a loose lug nut. Proper way to check my lug nuts is with a lug nut wrench. I'll also check in the well of the wheel here. Got a little bit of rainwater in it, but I'm looking to make sure I don't have any puddling oil. Puddling oil would mean that I have a leaking hub gasket. So it's a hub gasket on the outside, a wheel seal on the inside. This here is my valve stem and cap. Just checking to make sure they're securely mounted. They're not damaged. And proper way to check air pressure is with an air pressure gauge or a rubber mallet. Last part of my suspension, couldn't see from up front, is this airbag. And I want to make sure that the airbag is not rubbing or chafing. It's not cut. It's not cracked or frayed or split. And that the mounts are securely mounted to the trailer, or I'm sorry, to the uh, tractor frame. And that the lower mount is in its proper position supporting the airbag and the suspension. Also from here, it's a good place for me to inspect my fifth wheel. I can see that there's no gap between the upper and lower fifth wheel. I can see my fifth wheel mounting uh, platform is securely bolted to the frame with no missing hardware. And that my sliding fifth wheel track is bolted in place. The bolts are all there, nothing loose, nothing missing. And that I can see here is my locking pins for the sliding fifth wheel and they're in the lock position. This is my sliding fifth wheel handle and it's in the retracted and locked position. And this is my pivot pin right here, and this is a retaining pin in front of it to keep it in place. All right, so now I need to go around behind. Before I do, I would explain that I'm gonna inspect this axle and everything on it just like I did the forward axle. So now I'm gonna come around behind, coming up underneath, and I'm gonna look up there at my fifth wheel. And up there at the fifth wheel, I can see that the locking jaw is securely wrapped around the shank of my kingpin. Also, as I come on back here, then I can see my rear cross member. Cross member is squarely mounted in between the frame rails, no missing hardware. I can see my mud flaps and hangers on both sides here are not missing. They're securely mounted in their proper position. No missing hardware. Also, I have 100% DOT tape across the back along with my reflectors and lights. So my lights do not have any cracked or broken or missing lenses, neither do the reflectors. And then of course, from here, I'm looking at the floor of the trailer and my cross members, making sure I don't have any broken or twisted or missing cross members. No holes in the floor of the trailer. And for as far back as I can see, I have a little bit of minor damage to some cross members, but I do not see any holes in the floor or nothing that's missing or loose. Checking out my landing gear. Just wanna make sure all my braces and brackets are securely mounted there and in place. The tie bar across the top has its hardware in place and nothing's missing. And then I would check my pads and make sure that they do flex and move as they should. Having just got out from underneath the trailer there, um, coming to the outside, I wanna check my landing gear handle, make sure it's properly attached, bolts in place, and it's in its properly stored position there. I'm gonna go back up to the front of my trailer and wanna begin up there to do the inspection of my trailer. So, up here at the front, thing I'm looking at is the top of the trailer up here and the front header board just to make sure 
that I don't have any missing rivets or rows that are popping loose, no panels coming undone, there's no holes or penetrations through the front. I can also check my vehicle registration over there in that panel, and I think I have uh, an identification plate up there inside of that as well. All right, I'm also looking at the uh, airlines and electric lines. So on here, I wanna go ahead and pull my airline and I wanna check the rubber grommets. And in checking the rubber grommets, I'm making sure that I don't have any cracked or broken or folded rubber grommets. They're in good shape. There's no apparent damages to it. The holes are free and clear. Go ahead and put this one back on rotate it into place and I would inspect this glad hand just like I did this one I'm gonna pull off the electrical connector on this end and I'm checking it to make sure that I don't have any excessive damage inside the sockets no excessive corrosion and I would also look up inside here to make sure that I don't have any broken or missing pins in the socket I'll put that back in I would inspect this end of my electrical connector, the same as I just did on the trailer. Also checking my air hoses here, make sure they're not rubbing or chafing on anything, they're properly suspended. All right, coming back out here then, I'm coming to the side of my vehicle. I see I have a valid state inspection sticker. I have 50% DOT, uh, DOT tape going down the side of the trailer. And the overall condition of the trailer, I'm looking to make sure that I don't have any holes or rivet rows or anything else that's gonna be coming loose on my side of the trailer. No apparent damage. Middle marker light lens, good full light lens, not cracked, broken, it's not missing. Coming on back here, then I'm gonna have to go up underneath the trailer so that I can inspect my items up underneath. Having climbed up underneath, one of the first things I want to do is check these air lines here. I'm making sure that they're properly suspended up off of the ground. The springs are all there and connected as they should be. All right, coming back to the back here. Back here is my air tank, and I just want to check it, inspect it, and make sure that it's properly mounted. It's not loose. It's not hanging from uh, its proper mount position. My forward axle here. I'm going to inspect that and I can start in the center which will be with the brake system. So I'll start with my air brake chambers here. I have spring brakes mounted here. Checking my air lines. Making sure they're not rubbing, they're not chafing. I don't see any signs of any damage to the air lines. My brake chambers are in their proper position. I do not notice any other unmanufactured holes. I can also see that they are properly mounted in their proper positions and from underneath here I can see that I have my push rod and yoke with retaining pins and cotter pins attaching it to the slack adjuster and I'm not beyond the 90 degree angle on either side. Again, push rod and yoke, retaining pins and cotter pins, and not beyond 90 degrees. Also looking at the condition of the brake chambers themselves, I do not see any unmanufactured holes, and they are properly mounted. Coming out to the suspension items, I can see here that I have my leaf springs and they're in their proper position inside the equalizer back here inside the spring mount up front leaf springs are in their proper position i do not have any cracked broken shifted or missing leaf springs my u-bolts do not show any signs of shiny metal shiny metal would indicate that i have a broken or loose u-bolt right underneath my leaf springs on this one this here is a uh, torque bar on the other side again another torque bar here or torque rod whichever way you want to call them and I'm just checking the hardware to make sure that they are properly mounted in place they're not loose they're not hanging and all that looks to be in good shape 
So now as I go on out, I'm looking at my foundation brakes. So right here, I can see my brake drum. My brake drum does not show any excessive damage. It's not cracked, it's not broken or missing any pieces. My brake shoes have at least one quarter inch of brake padding. And they're not separating away from the shoe or the lining. There's no chunks or missing pieces. And I do not have any puddling in the well of the wheel, which would indicate a leaking wheel seal. My rim has no excessive damage, no cracks, no unmanufactured welds. Tire sidewalls have no cuts, no cracks, and no bulges. My tire tread depth is at least 2 seconds of an inch on both of my tires. My tire sidewalls on the inside have no cuts, no cracks, and again, no bulges. Now this is a space rim, they're not butted. This is a spacer type rim. So I'm checking the spacer to make sure that it's in there good and square between the two rims, that there's no apparent damage to the spacer, no gaps, and all looks to be good. I also do not see any foreign objects trapped between my tires. Again, coming to the outside then, I've got my outside tire sidewall has no cuts no cracks and no bulges rim has no excessive damage no cracks and no unmanufactured welds all my lug nuts are here and in place and i do not see any signs of any rush trails on them that would indicate a loose lug nut probably way to check my lug nuts is with a little lug nut wrench valve stem and cap in their proper position, proper way to check my air pressures with an air pressure gauge or a rubber mallet. I also do not see any puddling oil in the well of the wheel, which would indicate a leaking hub gasket. All right. Also, while I'm out here, I can see my uh, release handle. Oh, here it is. My release handle is in the locked and retracted position which is the right position for me to go down the road. Over here is my equalizer, and I want to check the equalizer to make sure that I have a space that I can fit my fingers in there, just a little bit between there and the frame, uh, to check and make sure the bushings aren't completely wore out. I'm going to inspect this axle, this axle and everything that is on it, just like I did the forward axle. Coming back here, I'm going to check my mud flap hanger and my mud flap, make sure they're securely mounted onto the trailer. All my bolts and hardware are there and in place. Checking my cross members and the floor and making sure I don't have any holes through the floor. No broken, missing, or dangling cross members. Out here, I can see my door retainer chain or clip is in its proper position, attached. I have a light lens here, it's not cracked, broken, or missing. And my reflector is a good hole reflector, it's not broken or missing. Coming on around to the back of the trailer, again I can see overall condition of my trailer here. All my hinges are there and in place, the doors close well, they're latched like they should be. I can see I have 100% DOT tape across the back, my DOT bumper or ICC bumper, whichever way you want to call it, is not damaged, it's a proper height, and again, it's got proper amount of reflective tape on it, 100%. Have a valid license plate on my light lenses and reflectors are good whole lenses, nothing cracked, broken, or missing. I also have an illumination light here for my license plate. I would also say then that I come around to this side that I would inspect this side of my trailer exactly like I did the other side. So it's time now to go back up to the cab of the truck. Okay, so as I get up inside the truck, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is gonna take out the key from my pocket and I'm gonna put that in the ignition. I'm gonna enter the truck, get my seat adjusted correctly. All right, familiarizing myself with the instruments on the truck. Uh, I've got my oil pressure over here, water temperature, 
my voltage gauge, and then my two air pressure gauges, which we're going to be using, are over here to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my key on. Check my lights there. My check engine light comes on. And once it goes out, I'm going to push in on the clutch and crank my engine. First thing I'm going to inspect once the engine starts is my oil pressure. The needles are resetting, and there is my pressure. I've got 50 pounds of oil pressure. Okay. Looking at the water temperature, it's cool. Engine hadn't been run in a while. Also, voltage, I've got about 13 and 3 quarter volts, so we're good there. And then my air pressure over here, a little under 60 in my primary and almost zero on the secondary, so we're going to have to let that build. While that's building, I'm going to go ahead and try out my seat belt. Check that to make sure that it functions correctly. And it latches like it should. <coughs> also then, um, I would adjust my seat, adjust my mirrors, and make sure all that is set. But while the engine's idling, quickly I want to get outside and check to make sure I don't have any spraying fluids or any strange noises. On my way out, I can see through the window here my steer tire. So this is a good time for me to check to make sure I do not have any excessive play in the steering. So I have no more than 10 degrees of free play right there from here to here. That's my free play. I'm going to go to the engine compartment then. fluid so I'm going to go ahead and close my hood I'm going to re-enter the cab alright so while I'm waiting on my air pressure gauges here to build up, I can check some other things. I want to go ahead and check my defrosters. Turn that on up on high. And then I need to feel up here to make sure that I can feel air blowing out that would blow up onto the windshield. And we do. That's good. All right. Um, I can go ahead and turn my light switch on. And make sure that my dashboard lights, my instrument lights, are lighting up. Which is kind of difficult to see in the daytime. Okay. Go ahead and turn that switch back off. I want to make sure my windshield wipers work. And they're working like they should. Turn those back off. I want to check my city horn and my air horn if I have enough air pressure. And that works. Okay. And let's see. Other than that, that's going to be pretty much most of my interior checks. I can check my mirror there on the right hand side. I have remote control access here on my driver's door that I can change my mirrors. And so I can make those correct so that I've got, again, got my seat adjusted right. Alright, now air pressure is almost up. It's getting near about 120 there now. So I'm just listening for my air dryer to spit so that I know I have my maximum air pressure. 
check the free play in the clutch also check my gear lever to make sure that it was properly attached to the transmission whenever i got up here in the truck So I'm about max pressure there. I dryer has spit, so I know that I'm at the maximum pressure. I can go ahead. <clears throat> I can go ahead and turn off the key. Now I'm going to let the engine stop, but then I'm going to turn my key back on so that I can begin an air brakes test. I'm going to turn the engine fan down or the cooler fan down. All right. Now, the first part of the test that I'm gonna do, since I have air pressure built up, is I'm gonna do a um, tug test, which means I need to have the engine back on. So I should have done that without turning it off. All right, so the way I'm gonna do that, to do my tug test, is I'm gonna go ahead and push in on my red valve. That will allow air pressure to go to the trailer and that will release my trailer brakes. At that point, I can see I've got a little bit of a drop there, filling up the tanks on the air, on the uh, trailer. So I'm gonna go ahead, push in my clutch, put it into low gear, and the only thing that'll be holding me now is my tractor parking brakes. So I'm gonna test them. I'm gonna let the clutch come up slightly and tug on it, and that holds. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pull the red valve back out. I'm gonna push my yellow valve in, and that way now I'm releasing the brakes on my tractor, and the trailer brakes are the ones that are actually holding me in place. So again, I'll begin to slip my clutch. I can feel the brakes hold me, and the truck's pulling against that. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and release both of my brakes. So now all my parking brakes have been released. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and slip the clutch a little bit, allow the truck to move forward at a very slow speed, and then applying my brakes, bring the truck to a stop, and make sure that I stop smoothly and it does not pull me to one direction or the other. With that being done, I'm gonna pull both of my brake valves out. So they're out. Again, I'm gonna build that air pressure back up, so I'll give it a little bit of throttle. Get my air pressure built back up. Listening for the air dryer to spit again. spit so I now have my air, air pressure built up to the maximum it's about 130 on this truck so I'm going to turn my key off allowing the engine to stop this is going to be a leak down test so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to turn that key back to the on position without restarting the engine as you can see my needles are resetting I've got electricity up here on my dashboard so the first step is gonna to be to push in both of the brake valves. I'll put this into a gear so that the truck doesn't roll away. And the air is filling all the brake chambers, releasing all my brakes. And I can see that there's an initial drop on my gauges. It's not to be any greater than 20 PSI. Once those needles stabilize, I'm gonna pull out my watch or my cell phone in my case, and I'm gonna go ahead and begin timing it for one minute. And during that minute, I should not see any greater than a two PSI drop for the tractor, three PSI drop for a combination vehicle, which I am a combination vehicle. So we'll give it time, whole minute. For the purposes of the video and this test, I'm going to go ahead and shorten that though. So we'll say that the one minute has gone by. 
Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check to make sure that my service brakes do not leak. So I'm going to apply pressure to the foot brake and I'm going to push hard. And while I'm holding that down after the initial drop, the needles stabilize and I should not see any more than a 3 PSI loss for a tractor, 4 for a combination vehicle. Again, I'm timing it for one minute now and watching to see if I have any air leaks. That's with my brake pedal pushed, applying pressure to the system. All right, again, we'll shorten that up and say that the minute has gone by for the video. Now, having performed that, that's my second test. My third part of this test is then gonna to be to check the emergency warning system. The way I do that is I'm gonna do so by pumping the brake pedal, leaking air pressure down, and at or around 60 PSI, I get my warning light here on the dash and an audible alarm that you can hear. That is the emergency warning system. Now, the fourth and final step to the air brakes leak down test is to check the function of the actual emergency brakes. So I'm gonna to continue to pump down on the brake pedal and somewhere between 40 and 20 PSI, both of my brake valves should pop out. So I'm watching the brake valves. All right, both brake valves just popped out and again, I am down there approximately 40 to 20 uh, PSI on my pressure gauges. So that finishes the leak down test of the air brake system. Now my final part of the inspection is to get outside and check my lights. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I've got my lights turned on. I'll go ahead and put my four-way flashers on. And I can crank the engine back up and let it build air pressure back up while I'm outside doing this. And then last and final step again to the air to the uh, pre-trip inspection is a lights check. Okay, so from outside the truck, I'm gonna go to the front. See my turn signal is working. High beam headlight. Again, turn signal. Turn signal, high beam light, another outer turn signal. I can see my light lenses up here on the top for my marker and ID lights are working. I'm gonna come back along the side. Turn signal light up here at the truck at the top of the corner of the trailer. I've got my ID lamp up there. Clearance marker lights. Middle of my trailer, again, turn signal and uh, Amber, amber light there making sure the light lens is not cracked or broken also coming to the back my corner marker light again not broken and it's illuminated it's working correctly coming across the back my turn signal four-way flashers are working my marker lights are on id lamps are lit and i can see that my license plate illumination light is working Coming out to the side here again. Corner marker light is working. Coming up the side. Now from here, I can also look up underneath the trailer and I can see my trailer or my tractor uh, rear lights are working also. Four-way flashers are working as well as the tail lights. Again, here on my middle marker, I've got good light lens. It's not broken, it's an amber lens. Turn signal is working. As I come on up here to the front, again, I can see my turn signal light lens, good amber lens, working. And I also have, it's very difficult to see in the sunlight, but my clearance lamp up at the top is also working. And that concludes my pre-trip. Turn all my lights and all off.